So today we're going to have our second lecture on polarization, where I'm going to talk about manipulating polarization. Last time we talked about how to describe polarization, and I'll review that just a little bit. And, uh, and this time I'm going to describe how, how we manipulate it. So when we have a, a beam that's going in a certain direction, let's just say that the beam is traveling in this direction, which we in optics is always a Z direction, and it's polarized vertically, that means that a side wave is going to have components that go up, down, up, down, up, down, as opposed to horizontal polarization, which would be in and out of the board. Um, we can describe this polarization as having some, some Y component. This is, this is Y um, and X has to come out of the board. Uh, no, X has to go in because X cross Y is always Z. So this particular beam has a, has a Y component of the electric field, but no, no X component. And we described that polarization. So because the beam is propagating in the Z direction, we learned that there's no component of the electric field in the Z direction. So we only have to keep track of the, the vectors in the X and Y direction. And so we described this, the polarization of the beam with just two, two numbers, the amplitude of the, usually the complex electric field in the x direction and the amplitude of the complex electric field in the y direction. And for this particular beam, the x naught component would be zero because there is no component in the x direction and the, the y naught would be something. And the phase of the y naught component, because this is a complex number, the phase has to do with where you start. So if, if there's a zero, right here at, at the origin. Let me just redraw this, this is y, this is x. So this looks more like a sine than a cosine. So that means the phase of this isn't zero because that's what you would get for a pure cosine. The phase of this would be more like uh, 90 degrees. So this would be a, a pure imaginary number with a 90 degree phase this is the real the imaginary. So this, Numbers along the real axis are pure cosines. Numbers along the imaginary axis are, are pure, translate into pure sines when you take their, when they, when you add their complex conjugates. So let me just review a little bit some, some examples that, that we saw. Maybe I'll write them up here for, for reference here. So uh, the, Let me, no, I need to grab a, uh, my notes from last time because I, I have almost all of them, but I want to get the signs consistent with what we had last time. So just a second. So we saw that the, what we call horizontal polarized is all in the X direction. And we're just keeping track of some overall, um, but well, the, the last thing I mentioned is we often factor out some overall intensity. We factor out the, uh, or some overall amplitude, the square root of X naught squared plus Y naught squared. We often factor that out. And, and if we care about just the polarization, we, we can ignore that. So the horizontal vector is just one zero. So all X, no Y. The vertical vector is zero one, all Y, no X. Uh, we have what, what's called diagonal polarization, which is equal amounts of both. So one over root two, one, one. Anti-diagonal, so this is polarized 45 degrees in the positive X, positive Y. Anti-diagonal is one minus one. So it's instead of pointing this way, like diagonal does, anti-diagonal points that way. And here's the ones where I, I can often uh, never remember the sign convention. Right circular polarized light is 
equal amounts of horizontal and vertical, but with a 90 degree phase shift. And we saw in the movie last time, if you have equal amounts of horizontal and vertical with no phase shift, you get a di diagonal sum. But if you shift one of them by 90 degrees, you get a, uh, uh, you get a rotating sum. So that would, in the sign conventions we used, right polarization corresponds to one and minus I and left going polarization corresponds to one plus I. Uh, my marker's fading a little bit. So, and, and of course you can have any polarization in between. These are just six, six special ones that are, that are convenient for, for defining kind of the, the limiting cases that, that we're usually interested in. So if you just had some arbitrary amount of X and some arbitrary amount of Y with some arbitrary phase, um, if you looked at how the electric field moves, it would move in, in an ellipse with some random angle and some random uh, eccentricity, some ratio between the long axis and the short axis. So, so today we're gonna talk about how to manipulate these polarizations. And because optics is linear, we're gonna manipulate vectors with matrices to get new vectors. And so I'll just start writing some examples of polarization devices that can, uh, that can do this manipulation. So my first device is, is just a linear polarizer. So let's see, a linear polarizer. So um, I'll, I'll have two examples. One is a horizontal polarizer. And this is gonna take some vector that looks like this, E naught X plus E naught Y minus, uh, sorry, plus. And it's gonna zero out the vertical component to give me just E, E naught X plus uh, zero. And what is the vector that does this or sorry, what is the matrix that does this for arbitrary E naught X plus and E naught Y plus? Well, the vector that does this, I remember right as T the transfer matrix for the horizontal polarizer. This is gonna be one, zero, 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 zero. So this is our first Jones matrix. It is an operation a matrix, an operation that we apply on these two component polarization vectors to give a new polarization. And, uh, this is from, from quantum mechanics. Maybe you recognize this as a projection operator. You're projecting onto the x, x axis. Uh, this is not a unitary operator. So, you know, because we're snuffing out uh, the vertical component here, the intensity of light that, that comes after this polarizer is gonna be smaller. Um, next one is a vertical polarizer, which you can imagine, um, the equivalent stuff there, and this is just going to be zero, 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 one. Um, you you may have played with horizontal and vertical polarizers in in physics fifty one. One example that I like to use is sunglasses. I can't, I guess I don't show up super well on the screen. Uh, let me see, let me see if I do the following thing in the video. If this if this works, so I'm going to try following potentially disastrous demo here. Okay, so, oh yeah, you can see, you can see my laptop. So if, if I have my sunglasses and these, these are not just polarizers, they also color the light a little bit, which is unfortunate. I, I have some better ones that don't color the light at home, but my laptop screen is, intrinsically polarized uh, just because that's how LCD screens work. And as I tilt it around, I get different components of that polarization coming through the glasses. Now, the component that does go through the glasses is also slightly colored, but you can see that when the glasses are oriented this way, it blocks all of the light. And when they're oriented this way, it lets through as much light as, as the tinted 
sunglasses are going to let through. And why, why is this a useful thing to have uh, polarized glasses? Well, that, that's what we're going to talk about next time. But we actually talk about Maxwell's equations uh, when, when light hits, hits uh, things like glass or water. So, so the, the idea of polarized sunglasses is that they're, they're especially useful if you're near water, where the sun bouncing off the water is often extremely bright, but it's, it's also quite polarized in a particular direction. And so if you can have sunglasses that block that, the, the sunlight bouncing off the water, um, you, you don't have to make them as dark. So you don't have to uh, block as, as much light while still blocking the, the stuff you don't want. So it's also useful for reflections off the tops of cars and, and other kind of uh, non-metallic non reflections. So, so cars are metal, but the paint on the car is uh, not, you know, you're not reflecting off of bare metal. So there is some polar polarization effect there. So polarized sunglasses are, are often useful for sunny, sunny places where there's just a lot of reflection off streets and cars and stuff like that. Even the, the plastic of the, the, uh, the dashboard, there's often quite a bright reflection off there, which which you can you can tell if you if you wear these polarized sunglasses and tilt your head, you realize how, how much pl more pleasant it is to to not have to look at that bright reflection off the dashboard. So, you know that we'll we'll talk about the electromagnetics behind that next time. But just operationally, these matrices just snuff out one polarization or the other. So these are by far the simplest uh, simplest matrices. I was going to spend most of the rest of the time talking about. Uh, other ways of manipulating polarization. So let me uh, let me just erase everything in in orange here. So let me erase everything. Everything. It's not these uh, reference reference polarizations here. So the thing we often want to do is not just block one polarization or another, but it's it's to manipulate the polarization. So how do we actually rotate polarization, say? Or how do we turn linearly polarized light into circularly polarized light? Or for that matter, turn circularly polarized light back into linear polarized light so we can use one of these um, one of these polarizers to test test whether we've we actually have circular polarized light. So most of that manipulation in optics is done with what are called wave plates. So let's see. Wave plates, this is what we'll talk about for most of the rest of today. So this is just some crystal that's that looks different in X and Y. So, um, so for example, the atoms of the crystal might be quite, quite closely spaced in the X direction and then in the y direction, there's a bigger gap. So this is sort of hugely exaggerated compared to how it how it actually is. But um, you know, anytime you have a crystal structure that's not uh, isotropic, that, that's different in the two directions, uh, you can have you can make a wave plate out of it. So um, th this type of crystal, um, yeah, it's it's an it's an anisotropic material, so it's not the same as you rotate. And the sort of optics name for this type of material is birefringent. So if the beam is going into the board, there are two different indices of ref refraction, which is why it's birefringent. So there's, if the, if the electric field is sloshing this way, say the index of refraction is gonna be one thing, and n sub x, and if the electric field is going up and down, the index of refraction is going to be something different, n sub y. And whether it's bigger or smaller, I think that depends on the, on the particular interaction with, with all the atoms. But you can find examples of these crystals uh, and measure their index, index of refraction in, in one direction and in the other direction and see that they're different. And examples, they're not particularly, um, they're not particularly obscure. So quartz, which is just glass that has been uh, 
it's a it's the same chemical composition as of glass, silicon dioxide, but uh, if you cool it slowly and have it form a crystal, rather than cool it quickly and have it form kind of amorphous blob, which is typically what glass is, if you form a crystal, the way the silicon and oxygen atoms arrange themselves is is asymmetric like this, and quartz is is birefringent. Calcite is another. Uh, is another birefringent crystal that's that's actually quite common in the Earth's crust. Uh, it's calcium, carbon, and oxygen. And uh, oftentimes, these these wave plates that we use in optics are are made of quartz or calcite, um, or sometimes you have combination wave plates for for various reasons. And that's that's what we're going to work with today. Now, um, why why is this useful? Well. You can imagine this is useful because it'll add, as, as the wave goes through, so this is, imagine this is a wave, uh, kind of erase it, this is a wave without, without a crystal, and this is a wave with a crystal. So say you put, it, you put a crystal in, and again, this is going to be a, a bit of an exaggerated picture, but before the crystal, let me see if I can draw it exactly the same, and then inside of the crystal, there's some index of refraction, and then outside of the crystal, maybe instead of being at a maximum, it comes out at a minimum. Yeah, still the same wavelength. Be a little bit careful here of the drawing. So the maxima is where the minimum was, and the minimum is where the maximum was. Maximum is where the minimum was. All right. So, so this has had the effect of, if we just look at what comes out. Is had the effect of delaying the uh, the phase of this wave by 180 degrees. You, you've gone from uh, maxima to minima, so that's 180 degrees of phase rotation. And you can imagine if if you had a crystal that acted differently in the x direction, which is not drawn here, than in the y direction, which is what's drawn here, uh, you can manipulate the polarization. And and so. The, uh, so for this example, there's some uh, some phi some phi that that would have happened in in air. So you can imagine that the amount of uh, well, phi uh, air in the y direction because this is all polarization in the y direction. Um, this would be the amount of phase that goes by in this little area is k times the thickness of this material, and k is just 2 pi over lambda times the thickness of the material. And the amount of phi that goes by in the same thickness of material um, is k T times the index of refraction, but here the index of refraction can be different in the x and y direction, so I'll, I'll give that a label. This is 2 pi over lambda times the thickness times uh, n sub y. So the thickness is a length, lambda is a length, so these phases are dimensionless, which is what we want. They come with a 2 pi, which is what you need for radians. Um, so maybe I should call this lambda in, in air or in vacuum just to be Maybe I should say this is vacuum. And then there. So for, for purposes of these crystals, air, air and vacuum are pretty, pretty similar, um, despite what uh, we, we learned from one of the labs. So this is pretty close to the vacuum uh, wavelength. And this is uh, this this wavelength gets squished by a factor of n sub y. So so what is the effect of, of one of these wave plates? Well, the effect of one of these wave plates, the transfer matrix for one of these wave plates is, well, we, we add a, a certain phase in the x direction, e to the i phi x, and a certain phase in the y direction, e to the i phi y, but there's no off diagonal terms because x polarization stays x polarization and y polarization stays y polarization. So let me just put some, indices on this, this is x and y. Um, and the beam, of course, always is traveling in the z direction. 
So if you have mirrors and stuff on your table and the beam is changing directions, you always just define your Z direction at the, at the site of this uh, optic to, to be the perpendicular direction into the, into the board. All right, so normally we don't care about overall phases. So again, just like we don't care about overall amplitudes, we don't care about overall phases. We sort of factored out uh, some overall phase to make the X component real. So, so we could write this as some e to the i phi x times one zero zero e to the i. Let's just call this delta phi. And and often we don't don't even write this. So if we want to keep track of overall phases, we have to keep track of overall phases in air too, and unless we're building an interferometer, often these overall phases don't, don't matter to us. If we just care about the polarization state, letting the beam propagate a little bit in vacuum or in air isn't gonna change the polarization state. So, so often we won't even bother with this. We'll just write, um, well, we'll just, you know, we'll set, set this equal to, equal to one um, when, when we, only care about polarization. Let me move my laptop. Only care about polarization. Sorry, I'm running out of room. All right. So, so there are some simpler. Um, let me get rid of get some things here. There are some uh, particular delta x's. That are that are popular, and we'll talk about those. Or sorry, not delta x, but delta phi's that are popular. So um, there's something called a. Uh, let me. I think I need all the room here. There's something called a half wave plate. Which delays, which is like what I drew. It delays the the beam uh, x relative to y by half of a wavelength. So half half of a lambda, and half of a lambda is delta phi equals pi. And so if I were to write the transfer matrix for a half wave plate, this would just be. So I'm going to ignore this overall phase because we only care about how the polarization goes, zero, zero, and then e to the i pi is minus one. So let's let's ask what, what this does to some of our states here. Um, for horizontally polarized states, I'm gonna draw some some temporary some temporary matrices here that I'll just draw and rewrite. So for horizontally polarized states, if I were to multiply this matrix out. Let me do a kind of dotted thing here. Just to show that I'm sort of quickly calculating some things here. So for horizontally polarized states, they stay horizontal. So let's, let's write that horizontal. We'll go to horizontal under halfway plate for vertical. This goes, the, this, keeps a zero component in the top row and has a minus, excuse me, has a minus one in the bottom row. But again, because the, the Jones vectors here uh, don't care about overall phase, again, unless we're doing some crazy interfer interferometer with polarization setup, um, if they don't care about phase, um, we just say vertical goes to vertical. So vertical goes to minus vertical, but uh, that's, that's not, it's still a vertically polarized light. So what does this actually do? Well, if we have diagonal polarization here, let's ask what happens there. So here we have uh, one, one with some uh, overall one over square root of two factor, but this will go to one minus one with that same overall square root of two factor. So diagonal polarization is gonna go to anti-diagonal and if I start off with anti-diagonal, 
So oriented like so polarization like this is going to turn into polarization like that. And if I start out with anti-diagonal one minus one, I do this, it will turn into diagonal. And similarly here, it's going to switch switch the signs of the bottom component. So R is going to go to L, L is going to go to R. It'll switch the handedness of the polarization. So halfway plates are useful for, for rotating, rotating polarizations and switching handedness. Um, the other sort of special case here is a quarter wave plate, which, which delays things by a quarter of a wavelength. So delta phi is going to be pi over two. And T for a quarter wave plate is going to be uh, one, one, zero, zero. And e to the i pi over two, that's just i. And again, I'll do, I'll do something similar here. I'm not going to go through all the options. Well, I, I don't know, why not? So horizontal here, one, zero. That's just going to stay one, zero. So that's going to go to horizontal. Vertical, again, because of these off diagonal elements, zero. 0, 1, if I go through the math, this will turn into I vertical, but again, we don't care about overall phase shift. So this is still vertically polarized. Um, diagonal polarized light now. So this is gonna be one over root two, one over root two. This is gonna go to one over root two, I over root two. That's left. So here we, we're taking linearly polarized diagonal light and turning it into left circular polarized. Anti-diagonal, I just change the sign here. That, that turns into right circular polarization. And similarly, right and left are gonna turn into diagonal polarization. So right, all I do is multiply this bottom part by I. So minus I times I is plus one is gonna turn into diagonal and left i times i is minus one, that's gonna turn into anti-diagonal. So, so quarter wave plates are useful for turning linear polarization into circular polarization and vice versa. So this is how you would check if a, if a beam is circularly polarized. You would put it into a quarter wave plate and it would turn into linear polarized light at uh, a particular angle, depending on uh, how you've, you have this crystal oriented. And then you could check, check whether it's linear polarized with a linear polarizer. So these two matrices are in fact unitary. If you, if you check their, um, uh, no, if, if you check that they're unitary, they, they are, they, they preserve probabilities. So in the, in the sense of amplitudes here, they preserve the overall intensity of the light. So it, all it does is it uh, moves polarization from horizontal to vertical, or it changes the phases of, of the horizontal and vertical components. But the intensity of the light, if you calculate EX naught plus EY naught plus, you take the, the square of this one and add the square of that one, then you, uh, you compare that to having applied the transformation and you compute the square of the new EX naught plus and the new E y not plus uh, magnitude squared. You will get the same uh, same magnitude squared. So uh, so these two preserve the intensity of the light. So they just manipulate the light without without uh, destroying anything. Uh, okay. So so this was so far. This was about wave. Oh, and then there's I guess there's an arbitrary wave plate, which is just this with some arbitrary delta phi. Um, this is all for the special case of wave plates oriented at, at what we call zero degrees in the lab, where, where one axis of the crystal is along the x direction, another axis of the crystal is along the y direction. Um, we want to ask what happens in the more general case where a beam of light hits hits a uh, hits a polarizer, or sorry, not hits a polarizer, hits well, hits either a polarizer or a wave plate, hits some some polarizing optical element uh, at, at an angle that's not uh, 
and that, and that optical element is not just at zero or, or uh, it's not just at zero degrees. So let me talk about that for a second. Switch colors. Um, okay, so how are we gonna do that? Well, imagine instead of having this sort of horizontally oriented crystal, you have some crystal that's at some funny angle here. So there are some crystal atoms, some crystal atoms, there are some crystal atoms. So we say that this, this optic has been rotated by some angle theta. And let's, let's define a new, a new, uh, y prime axis, a new x prime axis as the rotated axes here. And our strategy will be to take, take whatever light we have, express it in terms of x prime and y prime coordinates, apply the transfer matrix that, that is simple in, in those coordinates, and then express that light back in the original x, y coordinates. So for that, we need a change of basis matrix, which is not too difficult to come by. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. So let me, let me write it out a little bit um, more carefully here. So here's, here's my x y axes, here's my rotated y prime, x prime by some angle, theta. Let's imagine, let's make this axis a little bit longer so I can actually expand. So in order to work out how this thing transforms, we just need to work out how, how the basis vectors transform. So if I had some some coordinate that was x, some x and zero amount of y. If I were to project that onto the new, onto the new axes, in in the new axis, this would have a smaller value of x and a slightly negative value of y. So uh, this is a call this the, the rotation. Well, the rotation matrix, it's going to be a rotation matrix, it's a change of basis matrix. So um, I'm gonna, if I were to multiply this by X zero, if I were just ask what happens to a, a spot on the X axis, this would have to be a cosine and this would have to be a minus sign to get, the, to get this geometry right. So there's a slight, so imagine theta is really small. It's, it's easy to, to see why this would be. Cosine makes x prime slightly smaller than the original x, and minus sine gives you a small y prime component. So this this takes takes x x y and turns it into a x prime y prime coordinate. Um, and similarly for a, a spot on the y axis, so the other basis. If I were to draw projections here, again on on y prime axis is going to be slightly smaller. So this is going to be a cosine here, but here um, we get a slightly positive amount of x prime. So this is going to be plus sine of theta here. So this is the matrix that takes us from from the x y original coordinate system into the new coordinate system, where we can then apply our our transfer matrix, whether it be a polarizer that happens to be oriented in this direction or a wave plate that happens to be oriented in this direction, and then we have to apply the inverse of this transformation. To, to get us back to the, the coordinates of where we started. And remember the inverse of this transformation, you could work out the matrix inverse, that's uh, a bit of a pain, but you could also just realize that this is rotating by some amount theta and ask what is this, what is R of negative theta? Well, the cosines stay the same and the sines change sign. So uh, let's, let's work that out for, for an example of a half wave plate oriented at some arbitrary angle. 
And uh, part of the homework is to do this for quarter wave plates and for arbitrary wave plates. But uh, let me just say, okay, so half wave plate at some angle theta. Um, the, the transfer matrix for this is first we do this rotation. So I'm gonna just call this cosine minus sine plus sine cosine. Then we apply the half, half wave plate matrix, which is this, one, zero, zero, minus one. And then we go back to the original, which is the uh, R of minus theta. So there's still a cosine. And instead of a minus sign, there's a plus sign, minus sign, and cosine. All right, so let's let's go through a little bit of algebra and trig identities and see what we get. So this is cos plus sine minus sine cos. So this this matrix times this matrix. Uh, this first element is what cosine, and then minus sine minus sine minus cosine. Hope I did, I'm doing this correctly. I could check my notes, but I'd have to look down. All right, so here, here we get a little bit of complication. So this is gonna be cosine squared minus sine squared, cos squared minus sine squared for this first element. This element here is gonna be minus cosine times sine minus sine times cosine. So this is minus two sine cosine. Um, here again, we have minus sine cosine minus cosine sine minus two sine cosine. And the last one's gonna be plus sine squared minus cosine squared. So plus sine squared minus cosine squared. All right, so these, these look a lot like double angle identities. In fact, if I apply double angle identities, I get cosine of two theta, sine of two theta. Um, sorry, this is, uh, something went wrong here. Uh, this should maybe be a minus. Did I screw this up? Yes. No? Okay, so maybe. Uh, oh, okay, let me. Maybe my notes are wrong. So minus sine two theta minus cosine of two theta. Um, I think this is I think this is fine. I have to I have to think about it. I have in my notes I have this these signs are positive, but I might I might be wrong about that. Um, this looks a little bit like a rotation by two theta, but it's not quite right. The signs aren't quite right. Right, a, ro a true rotation would have one of these signs being positive and one of them being negative. What I worked out, they're both negative, and my notes are both positive. But either way, it's not a true rotation. Um, what what it is, it's it's close to a, a a rotation of two theta, but it's actually a uh, more like a reflection around the wave plate. So, so if you have your wave plate oriented at some some angle. And you start out with vertically polarized light. If you were to actually apply this matrix, what you would find is that uh, you would get light that comes out as if it were reflected around that wave plate. So, so this is very close to a rotation of twice the angle. So if the wave plate was off by some angle theta, you would get a. Uh, it would look like a reflection of of two uh, or, or rotation of two theta. So the only difference is that there are some some signs that that happen if you if you rotate by too much. And, and again, those overall signs don't matter unless you're doing some complicated inter, inter, interferometer scheme where you need to keep track of all the phases. Uh, but you know, one one simple way of looking at this is a wave plate. So it's it's horizontal wave plate. Horizontal wave plate oriented at forty five degrees will turn horizontally polarized light. Let me just draw one side of this. It'll turn horizontally polarized light into vertically polarized light. So if this is 
this is 45 degrees, it'll reflect across the wave plate and it'll turn horizontal, horizontal into vertical. So a half wave plate is a way of rotating linear polarization by some, by some amount, by an amount that's twice the angle that you set this at. Um, a, when, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's all I'll say about wave plates. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'll say about wave plates. Let me, let me see if there, anyone has any questions. Otherwise, I'll, I'll talk briefly about uh, what's called optically active materials. So things like sugar, sugar dissolved in water, chiral molecules. Uh, chiral molecules dissolved in water have, have some interesting effects on polarization. That'll be the last, last thing I'll talk about for you know, the last three minutes. So wave plates manipulate polarization, polarizers measure polarization. Basically they project out certain polarization. And if you had a polarizer oriented at a certain angle, you could go through all the same math here with uh, rotating it, applying the polarizer, rotating it back. That will, uh, that will give you the net effect. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about is it's called optical activity. So again, certain, a lot of sugars that are created by plants, they're often chiral molecules, so they, they have a handedness to them. If you, if you look at the complicated sugar molecule that a plant creates and you look at it in the mirror, uh, you could tell which one was the, the one that was created by the plant because its, it's mirror image is, is, not, is not, never the arrangement of atoms that's actually created. And so what that means is that if you were to shine circularly polarized light through it, it actually has a different index of refraction for right and left circularly polarized light. So there's some index of refraction for right circular polarized light, which is slightly different than the index of refraction from left circular polarized light. Because you have all these molecules dissolved in the water that have some preferred handedness. They, they interact with the light slightly differently. And so uh, what does this do if you put in something like horizontally polarized light? Well, if you put in something like horizontally polarized light, you can write horizontally polarized light. Uh, this, this is represented as uh, one zero, which you can write as uh, some combination, a half uh, one I plus a half one minus I. So this is one over root two times left plus one over root two times right. And if you pass, pass this through sugar, the left and the right components are gonna get a different phase. So, so after you pass it through, through uh, sugar dissolved in water, so through an optically active material, this will become one over root two left e to the i phi left plus one over root two right e to the i phi right. And now with these phases being different, if you were to write this back in terms of, uh, in terms of the original matrices, what you would find is there's some phase. So e to the i phi left plus phi right times cosine of the difference, sine of the difference. So I ran out of room here. Let me just write this. I'll write it. I'll write it out. So cosine of phi. Uh, so it's actually phi right minus phi left over two and sine phi right minus phi left over two. So if you put in pure horizontal light, uh, depending on how thick you make your sugar water, you get more and more phase difference and that will rotate 
So you'll you'll have pure horizontal light, and it will rotate it into some some combination of horizontal and vertical. And if you put it through the right amount of sugar, you can actually rotate it into purely vertical light. Okay, that is the last thing I'm going to say about polarization and polarization active media. Uh, so let me let me work on the on the homework and and the lab associated with that. I'll post that probably tomorrow afternoon or so. And uh, we'll meet again soon. All right, see it.